Good Thursday, everyone. Welcome to the VolQuest.com mailbag podcast presented by our good friends at Exterior Home Solutions. Give them a call today for that free estimate and inspection on your roof. If you got a project, an exterior project, siding, fencing, decks, windows, whatever you got going on, that's at Exterior Home Solutions. Give them a call today, 865-524-5888, 865-524-5888. And we certainly thank them for their continued support of VolQuest.com and of the VolQuest podcast. And uh, again, subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to VolQuest.com. It's a busy time. There's a lot going on. Obviously, baseball just wrapped up their season. Uh, we got plenty of recruiting stuff going on, and we've got plenty of your questions in this edition of the Mailbag Podcast. We've got a great lightning round question, AP. I'm going to save that one to the end. So you can, uh, we, we got to get you warmed up, get you ready, get you, get everything going before we get to there. Was it, uh, so, was it Michael Phelps, Michael Phelps, I'm gonna... Michael Phelps did a little yoga this morning. So we'll start with Athron, who, uh, we all know loves, um, loves the recruiting side of things. He's got multiple recruiting questions for you, Austin, by the way, Rob Lewis joining us here as well. Uh, let's start with question number one. Do we know if Cam Franklin canceled his LSU visit? Or was that LSU pushing it back, AP? Oh, just, uh, just, they te- just teed it up for AP right out, right out of the gate. Yeah, per the kid, he canceled that visit. Um, you know, and that's kind of what I wanted to know. Uh, you know, was this something where LSU said, you know what, if he's going a while, but it sounds like based off the fact that he went to Ole Miss a couple of days ago, Miami yesterday, that he's trying to kind of, you know, see each of his major contenders one last time, not going to Auburn this weekend, like he had told me back early, early in the week, which, you know, you know, I mean, that that's a bit, that's a bit surprising to me. Now, again, does he end up anywhere this weekend? Does Auburn convince him to come after? I'm definitely interested to kind of see where this thing goes the next, uh, the next little bit, because I think that, you know, based off of kind of how his week has went, he's possibly coming off the board in the next month, which is a uh, speed up, which I think is a good sign for the Vols. Not that they're a lock to get him, but I think it, the momentum you created last weekend, it's a lot harder to hold on to if the kid's going to take visits in September. If the kid's going to see all the rest of the schools this week, you're going to fend them off and see if you can keep that momentum from last weekend. But now you're talking about holding on to momentum for three, four weeks, not three months. Yeah, it's hard, hard to do for three months. That's the challenge in the whole recruiting process, Rob, is, is like, you know, is a kid really going to go early or, or more importantly, is he really going to go late? If he says he's going to go late and you try to hold it off until a fall visit and then he decides at the end of June he's ready to get it done and then you missed out an opportunity. That's a real challenge right now for coaches to have a feel for whether or not you need to go in June with a visit or you need to hold off till the fall because you're taking a high risk if you hold off to the fall because it seems like more kids are wanting to do it earlier than later. Yeah, the, the landscape – it has completely changed. And I, I, when 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 do you got when when did it flip? Two years what ago. Do you guys think to when June became was it because of the early kind of early signing period was that the the impetus for it? Do yes. you think? But yeah. I mean, I it, it is it is. I mean, and, and junior official visits, I think, are part of it. You know, kids well, can, think, yeah. kids can yeah, take yeah. take official visits as juniors. I mean, June has it's become tremendous. It's the way I mean, last weekend, this weekend, there was nothing like it previously, and it's 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 suddenly you know pushed the calendar back, or or I guess fast forward the calendar to a point to where um, I mean, this has become a crucial crucial month in recruiting. Well, you go back to when Tennessee signed the Darnell Wright Wanya Morris class. If you remember, you go back, Tennessee had in uh, Wanya Morris, uh, Owen Papo, and then there was one more. I forget who it was. Uh, that visited in the month of April. And then I think they might have had one or two in June. And it was really after, I think it was about two years after that class where the, everybody just shifted to June, tons of OBs in June, all these commitments in July. Last year's when I think I really saw the the big June, July, June, June officials, July announcements, like in full bloom. And now everybody, that's just kind of the commonplace thing. And again, you have a few that are going to hold out. There are the Daniel Hills of the world who are, going to wait until the fall. Um, the, the Ryan Wingos, who are going to take some visits, but they're still waiting until the fall. But, you know, the you know the rule right now is, is official in June and come in July or early August. All right, let's continue on here. Braylon Russell set to come off the board in July. Or is he set to come off the board in July? Or is he a guy that takes it into the fall, AP? No. Going to come in July 14th. It's his birthday. Um, you know, and, and he went to Arkansas last weekend. 
Uh, do not believe he committed to the Hogs or recommitted. He was once committed to Arkansas, but they kind of got sideways with him. He wasn't originally even going to take a visit there, but canceled his Purdue visit, went to Arkansas. And, I mean, optically, that just looks better, right? If, you, if, if, if you're Tennessee – and, and you beat out the Homestead Hogs versus Purdue and South Carolina and Baylor. Although, you know, Purdue, South Carolina's recruiting well, and Baylor obviously has had moments over the last few years. Um, you know, I, I still think Tennessee's got the momentum here. I still think Tennessee has a chance to potentially close that one out this weekend. And, um, you know, again, July 14th is when he will announce his commitment. So uh, everybody needs to circle that date. Uh, with Burns in the fold, is it safe to say Tennessee's looking to take three linebackers in the class? Yes, because I think that Evan Spillman and Tylen Singleton were uh, always uh, going to be takes. And so Tennessee decided, you know, Burns wanted in. They took it. And so I now think that if they can land Singleton and Spillman, they'll take three. Now, if they don't get those guys, I think you're probably back down to two. But, again, I think Singleton, they really like him a lot. They really like Spillman, obviously. And uh, so if you can get three, um, you take three. If not, then I think they'll be back down to two. All right. And lastly, he has. Where does Tennessee turn for a tight end now that Jackson has come off? Well, Roger Celiapaga, or sorry, that's that that's the redneck version of me saying his name. Oh, that's the Brent Hubs. That's the Brent Hubs pronunciation. Celiapaga uh, is how you say it. Um, the kid from Utah. Yeah, the kid from Utah. Uh, that will be you know obviously somebody they look at. Um, you know, there's a couple other kids out there that that Avon is. Uh, you know, kind of, you know, turned his attention to. Um, and, and, and they'll continue to swing at Amir Jackson. Amir Jackson committed to Florida last week. He didn't have anybody with him. Um, and so, uh, you know, there was no parental figure. There was no coach. There was nothing. So, like, you know, did he get kind of swept up in the weekend with everybody committing? It's possible. Either way, Florida had had months of recruiting him, um, you know, as kind of a baseline head of Tennessee. All right, Glock Vols wants to know, could Aiden Bustle have an impact this year in the rotation? He's put on a lot of weight and seems like with our situation, he could get some, he could get some playing time. Rob, I think that's a big ass for a freshman. Yeah, I'd be very surprised. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I would never say never. I mean, you see some guys come in, but I just, I, I would be really surprised out of the gate if he's somebody that, that plays early. Although it, it, he looks great. All right, let's move on to Nash Vols 615. He's got a couple of interesting questions here. We'll start with this one. Last 10 years, who are the best recruits that Tennessee legitimately beat out a home state school for in the following states? Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, North Carolina. Some names come to mind, but I would like to know your thoughts. Anybody got a quick thought? 10 years is a long time. I don't remember I don't remember last week in a lot of cases, guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's an Alabama kid that Tennessee's legitimately beat Alabama out for. Um, you know, Georgia. I mean, I think I'd have to uh, – this is kind of a question I'd probably need to be asking the money in that chat where I can have a little more time to kind of look back. Um, you know, David Hobbs last year is obviously one. Um, if, if, I don't know. When was uh, – uh, who's the receiver from North Carolina that had six fingers growing up and then he – you know, and, or he was born with six fingers? Um Made the big catches against South Carolina. Oh, Marquez North. North. Yeah, Marquez North. Uh, that'd be one, but that's probably fringe 10 years ago, right? That's a little before then. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things where, again, I need to go back and look at the classes to see. But, I mean, you know, if you're just talking about beating out the home state school, that, that's hard to do, especially when teams are rolling like Georgia is. Um, but now, with that said, Georgia does have a lot of um, – they have a lot of, you know, talent in that state. So, sometimes you can pull kids out of there that – that they want because, you know, t the kid doesn't want to go there just because it's so congested. Like a Mike Matthews is a real possibility for Tennessee to pull one out of and beat Georgia out on. Well, and I think you got to – I mean, if you're looking at Georgia, you're going to have to go back five-plus five, five plus years, Rob, because once Kirby Smart got there, Georgia's life changed. Oh. Their fortunes changed. Their recruiting has, very ch has changed a great deal. So it, it was easier to go in and get some of those guys, you know, that way. Um, but, again, I mean – the reality is you got to win a few of those battles and then you got to find guys in, in, in other states, right? I mean, well, that's and it's also, it, 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 and it, it's not like it's a gotcha question that you're not beating Georgia and Alabama for recruits in their, in their own backyards right now. I mean, how many national championships have those guys, you know, just won? I mean, it's, it's not like it's 1995 for, for, you know, and, and Philip Fulmer is going down there and cherry picking. I mean, it's, the landscape is much different in, in North Carolina. Much easier target right now. You know, South Carolina, even with Clemson, is a much easier 
you know, I, I think much more fertile recruiting ground because it's it's no black eye to say you can't oh you can't beat Georgia or Alabama, you know, out for kids in their own state right now. Uh, Nashville's second question: Have the Vols misplayed their hand at tight end and offensive tackle? Why do you feel like Tennessee is playing catch up and will be in the portal no matter what? Well, I think the 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 the, the tackle recruiting is definitely a head scratcher to me uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, but I mean, again, you know, sometimes you go for fit. Sometimes kids don't fit. Some kids don't think you're a fit for them. Um, either way, they've got to find tackles. Uh, you know, whether that starts with Bennett Warren this weekend or whoever. Um, you know, they probably got to go to the portal at both positions. Even if you land Roger. Sali Aponga, the other tight end from from Utah that just visited, you know, or you swing in Amir Jackson. You know, Amir Jackson, you know, again, was, you know, committed this past week to Florida, but he did so without any parents there, without any coaches there. Like, it was just, you know, did he kind of get swept up individually in what was going on down there? You know, Tennessee, I'm sure, will continue to contact him. Either way, I still think Tennessee needs to go to the portal um, – at both positions going forward because right now, like Tennessee's got what three guys that you can count on that are scholarship guys. They're a couple of injuries away from being, you know, uh, probably not in a real good spot there this year. I think they'll be able to survive it. But I mean, again, it, you know, a couple, a couple of, you know, twisted ankles and, you know, it, it becomes way more difficult at that position. So I think Tennessee really needs to look at the portal for both. Yeah, they're going to have to have a big year in recruiting at those two positions to get out of that portal cycle. Uh, I mean, they, they really are. And, and some guys are going to have to hit from a development standpoint that they're not looking. It's not just it's not just looking for depth in the portal. They're looking for a guy who can come in and play in the portal because they don't have, you know, guys ready. Um, so th they're going to have to hit on some guys in, in – in, for a couple of years to get out of that portal life, I think at those two spots. Um, Sam Smith, twenty two thirty three, wants to know what is Corey Robinson's role going to be on the staff. AP, this is pretty simple. Those guys anymore, you kind of do everything. I, I know there's some limitations, but I mean, he's going to watch film with these guys. He'll do individual stuff with these guys. Um, you know, you, you hear whether it's a GA, an analyst, whatever, you hear recruits talking about their relationships with these guys that they develop on unofficial visits when they're on campus, when they talk to them on the phone. Um, they have a, you know, th this has a big role in football programs around the country at the Power Five level. It does. And, again, th those those people play a key role, um, you know, the QCs, the GAs. I mean, it's why you hear recruits talk about CHOP, why they talk about Max, why they talk about dog and some of these people that are in these roles that aren't in on the field, um, they still can have an impact with, you know, through relationships with kids. And so, um, again, I think that, you know, everybody in the building plays their role, some bigger than others, but, uh, you know, they do a little bit of everything. All right, let's uh, get one more in here before we get an, uh, an update from our good friends at Exterior Home Solutions. Let's go to GBO Chicago on the Tuesday pod. Austin mentioned a few uh, NFL Vols being in town last weekend. In addition to Darnell, who made it in and were there any other VFL prospect connections made? Alante Taylor was yeah, in. Alante Taylor was here, yes. Um, yeah, I, I think there was, was one or two more. I just can't remember who they were. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think any of that stuff helps, right? You know, guys that have just been here, that have played for these coaches, that are now in the NFL, that were a top ten pick or, or you know, played a lot as a rookie last year with the Saints like Alante did. I think all that stuff, you know, matters. And because they can kind of be a good testament. You know, hey, man, they did me right. You know, they, they looked out for me, blah, blah, blah. They helped develop me. I was this before I, they got here. Then I turned into this once they got here. So, you know, I think all that helps. Yeah, Caleb Beasley noted that that he had a chance to visit some with Alante Taylor when when he was just talking about Tennessee's defense and, and how it all fit for him. All right, uh, more of your questions coming up here on the Mailbag Podcast. But first, a message from our good friends at Exterior Home Solutions. You know, life happens, and damage to your home can be extremely stressful. That's why it's important to find someone who offers efficient, quality work with financing options. Exterior Home Solutions, they value not only family, but community. And they're who I call when life happens, and you should too. Thanks again to our good friends at Exterior Home Solutions. Give them a call at 865-524-5888 for all of your needs for your home. And again, we got all these storms going through the area. Make sure your roof is in good shape. They will come out, give you an inspection, free estimate for whatever you might need. 
Uh, Rob Lewis, this may be one of the best screen names uh, at VolQuest. I miss Denarius Moore. And I miss oh, wow. Denarius Moore has this following question about Christian Charles. I know he was moved uh, positions, high school to college and within college. He's had some injuries the past three years. With all that said, the buzz around him has always been about his potential on the back end. Is this year he brings it all together, or is he a Jimmy Calloway S enigma, a talented player who never puts it together, minus the on-field um, issues that Jimmy Calloway seemed to have from time to time? I mean, I, I think that's a, that's a great you know guy to, to to wonder about going into fall camp because I'm I personally about. <laughs> kind of always been enamored with Christian Charles. I mean, high school quarterback, you know, one of those guys that is, looks super talented. And, and does he find a home? And, and I, about before we move on, that is a great screen name. And, you know, shout out to, I miss Lennon career as well from, from the same Texas high school. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, I miss Lennon career. <laughs> but seriously, I mean, Christian Charles is one of those you want. I mean, there's, there's a lot of guys like that in the secondary. I think that, or talented, you know, big time athletes, and you know where do they fit. Do they find a home? Do they get on the field? I don't. I mean, he. I don't know the answer to that, but he, he's a guy that I'll be looking at in fall camp. I, I miss Lennon Greer on the Louisiana Tech site. <laughs> Denarius Moore, by the way, committed during bowl practice, um, during Outback Bowl practice, because I was in Tampa, Florida, when uh, his commitment broke, and everybody wondered, are they taking him? Are they not taking him? You know, what's the deal? Because it was all about Lennon Career, and then Daenerys Moore was kind of just a just an add-on, if you will, at that point when he committed. So um, Some of Trooper Taylor's best work. Some of Trooper Taylor's best work. Daenerys Moore's a good football player. Uh, mm-hmm. he, re- he really was. Had a nice NFL career as well. Uh, for Christian Charles, I think in order to be a factor, he's just got to stay healthy, and that's just something he's not been able to do to give himself a chance since he got that injury at Missouri when he got the start. We haven't seen a whole lot uh, – from him since because he's not been able to stay healthy. All right. More steam wants to know, is Tennessee still recruiting Iffy, the defensive back from Maryland? I mean, do they contact him occasionally? Probably, but nothing's going on there. All right. Roll Vols roll. Do you see the scope of the Lindsey Nelson Stadium renovations expanding in light of huge donor support and the team's performance in the postseason? No, I don't. I, I think that you have to be careful not to make this thing too big. I mean, Mississippi State had – I mean, the only the only games Mississippi State sells out is Ole Miss. Otherwise, there's a bunch of empty seats. You don't need a 13,000-seat baseball stadium. Um, so, no, I don't think the scope of it's going to get any bigger in terms of size of the stadium and in terms of scope of what they're doing. I mean, they're basically redoing everything, Rob, but demoing the bones uh, of the stadium based on, yeah. on the first renderings we've seen. I mean, I, I think – I mean uh... – us, the guys doing this podcast, and uh, you know, the people like, like the, the the individual just asked, asked the question. I mean, I think we have tunnel vision a little bit. I mean, because baseball for for us for VolQuest is is huge. I mean, right now it didn't even exist five years ago, and now it's a big thing. But for a lot of people, the fan base, it still it still doesn't move the needle a lot. And it, it, maybe fan base is wrong, but. Uh, the wrong word to use, but there, I mean, there are a lot of Tennessee people that are big time football people, you know, big time basketball people who just, you know, are not, not that into the to, to baseball or, or don't follow it that much. And I, you, you guys know folks like that. I mean, I've got, you know, my, my dad's 70 years old and is, is an alumni and has, you know, his, his whole golf group or, you know, or, or season ticket holders in football and, and it's hit or miss, as to whether or not, you know, they're, they're baseball guys. I mean, it's kind of, you know, some are, some are AP. I mean, Hubber, I mean, you guys have, have, you know, family and friends and people all over. And it's, I mean, baseball is huge for some. I mean, it is for most of the people I know, but for other guys who, you know, are, uh, are otherwise huge Tennessee fans, it's, you know, it's, it's not that big of a thing. And that's, and I think that's why you don't need a, a 12,000 seat stadium. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and, and again, there's a lot of people who like it who don't go to games as well. I mean, yeah, that's you know, a great, great people, point. You know, they're not driving up on a Tuesday for for a midweek game, or not coming up for. They're not Friday coming up for Bellarmine. <laughs> yeah, well, they may not even make it in for the Friday night game, right? I mean, no, so I mean, they'll, they'll watch um, it on Saturday night on TV for sure. But. Right. Well, I mean, Tony Vitello wants it to be a hornet's nest. So to make it a hornet's nest, move everything a little closer to the field, add a row or two, make it a little tighter there. 
Uh, and it could be a hornet's nest at 7,000 seats. Make it of, Auburn basketball. I mean, like, you know how they, yeah, they made that point. small stadium, that's, 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 and it's, a, it's, a, it's hard to play in there. And yeah, make it like that. You, you can still make it bigger and keep it kind of like the friendly confines, right? Like yeah. keep, keep it quaint. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. It's a great comparison because what Auburn's done for, for their basketball arena has been – um, it's been really good because it's not too big. So you create a demand for the ticket and it's obviously a very loud place. All right. Tennessee Tater wants to know this Austin price. Do we have any recruits prospects that probably play above what their star rating indicates? If that's the case, why are we so worried about the lower rank lineman when Ellerby has shown to be a developmental guy? Well, I, I you know, it, you're talking about this particular class. I, I think you, you don't worry about, you know, there's always going to, one, it's a developmental position. Two, you you don't worry about like let's say you're taking seven, right? We, that's kind of the number we've talked about on the board. You're taking seven. If you're if you're four or five of those guys are guys that are going to help you two, three years down the road, you don't worry about that. But you still need one or two guys. It's even hard. Look, look at Wanye. Still got drafted, you know, you know, the fifth round. Darnell went first round. Those guys played as freshmen. They weren't ready as freshmen. But, like, you also don't need them to be waiting until their junior and senior year to be ready either. So, like, like right now when I look at the offensive line room, like, there's nobody that I can say, yep, 2024, that guy's definitely a starter. There, there's nobody. I mean, maybe Addison Nichols, you know, out of that young group. But, I mean, there's there's nobody else that I feel like, yep, Masai Reddick's definitely a starter. Mo Clipper, definitely a starter. Uh, Brian Grant, definitely a starter. Like, I mean, like, there's nobody there that I can just go, yep, that, that guy, the light bulb is going to come on. Maybe it does. Well, and, and, and that's I, what you got to hope. But I, again, like, I, I just feel like, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, you're right. I mean, I think the bigger question, though, is just where is the true offensive tackle, right? I mean, and yeah. that follows up into NWGA Vol's question. The staff would love to land an elite tackle. Perhaps they think some guys in the class both committed and accurately recruited has some flexibility and could play different positions, including tackle. Ginther, Anderson, Satterwhite, Calhoun, could, could they play the tackle position? Also, I, I feel like most of those guys are interior guys. Well, they right? are. Satterwhite one's like 6'2". So, like, no, he's not playing no tackle. He, to me, if he's doing anything, if he's playing center. Like, I think he's a, a future center if you end up landing William Satterwhite, which Tennessee, again, has got to find somebody to replace Cooper. Is that going to be Addison Nichols? I don't think there's anything that definitively shows you that he or Vice and Lang are ready to step in if, if Cooper gets hurt this fall. Like, and, and so, like, I think that that's a position you've got to figure out. you got to learn. Um, but the tackle spot, I mean, could Max Anderson potentially play it? Maybe. But he's really an inside guy. He's not super tall. Um, I think he, I think he's going to be a mean, nasty guard. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, Cal- Calhoun could potentially play right tackle. But, you know, again, that's one that he's got to get in the weight room, get with the nutritionist, get himself in better shape, you know, all that stuff. Because he's got to get quicker if he's going to be out on the edge. Um, all right, let's get, go ahead. Sorry. And then what, who's the other one? Oh, Ginther. I, I think Ginther and Jesse Perry are absolute tackles. And, again, though, yeah. how, how ready will they be as freshmen? Yeah, it's hard. hard. I mean, it's just that's hard. they go to the portal. Yeah, it's just hard to play that position. I mean, look, Darnell Wright's a top ten pick. Had no business, as you said, playing his freshman year. He just wasn't physically ready to play the position. He was out of shape and um, just trying to learn it. I mean, it's hard. I mean, and, another, is- and in this league, Hubbard, I mean, how many times? I mean, if you're playing offensive tackle, how many NFL defensive ends or you know outside linebackers are you going against? Yeah, More, yeah a, a lot. Just a 21 year old man coming off the edge, and you're an 18 year old who's just shoved some guy down for your last four years, right? I mean, you basically have tackled him. is all you had to do for four years. You know what I mean? Uh, all right, let's right, let's run through a few more here right quick to get it done. Logan Bartlett wants to know, best throwback untold recruiting story from a guy that ended up elsewhere. I know you got one. I know you got one. Hover, you, Hover you, you got the best one. Which it's one's Randy that? Moss. It's Randy Moss. Oh, yeah. Randy. It's Randy Moss. Come on. Poor Randy. <laughs> Randy, 23 phone rings. Randy, dog cussing me and hanging up the phone. I talked to Rand, it's I talked to my son at basic for 10 seconds for him to let me know he was there. That might have been a longer conversation than I had with Randy Moss in 18 months covering his recruitment. Um I, I, everyone wants to know why I don't do crystal balls. The reason I don't do crystal balls is because it runs a kid moment. 
it just does. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Anybody that does it, hey man, that's on them. And they, they want to do it. I'm not hating on them. It's what it is. That's the, the you know because that that's the kind of the shtick, right? I didn't. I quit. I, I quit doing prediction predictions like like that because the, I, there was one kid I ruined his moment, uh, and I felt terrible afterwards. And it was DJ Humphreys. Like I remember, like it was kind of Twitter was kind of just been around a little while, and you know <laughs> somebody asked me on Twitter about DJ Humphreys, and I said he's going to Florida, and he tweeted back and he goes, "Wonder where you heard that from?" With like the thinking emoji, and it I'd heard it from him. Like I, you know, I ruined his moment. You know, and he he was being nice to me because I had done him right up to that point. And uh, he had told me he was not going to go to Tennessee. He was going to Florida. And he had called me just like he'd called Tennessee and told him he was going to, you know, going to go to Florida. And, you know, I did the kid wrong and, and I, I learned a lesson from it, which is why it's always important to learn lessons from these things where none of us are perfect. And the, my lesson was, is, you know, these kids – Endure our phone calls. Ninety percent of them are phenomenal. There are the occasional ten percent that just you know, you know, you just want to run from. But you know, ninety percent of them are phenomenal. And you know, I just uh, I try to treat kids ever since then how I would want my kid to be treated. And so you know, thus there's one kid that went elsewhere, and there's the story behind it. All right, on three, Cookval wants to know, DJ Terry, is Oklahoma really closer to Mississippi than Tennessee? My Google map says it's further away. Don't, um, don't, don't get me started. Well, I, I think DJ I think DJ Terry's family may be in Oklahoma. That's correct, Hubber. And so that's why it's closer to, to be in there. Yeah. All right, last question. Not. Last question of the day. You ready? This one, strap it up. All right. This, ready, I'm ready. This is rapid fire. Here we go. This is <sighs> Nashville 94 percentage AP. These recruits will be playing in a Tennessee uniform. It's a lightning round. Do you want to do percentage or do you want to say, how, how do you want to do this? Because there's literally like 15 or 20, 15 of these to go through. Here. Uh, hold so, on, hold on, man. I got to warm up the vocal cords. This is for Randy Green, my high school choral <laughs> teacher. Please pass the peas. How thou now, brown cow. <laughs> it's a species spicy metabola. Right, okay. I thought you were going to do. Uh, I thought you were going to do Barney get ready to sing at the choral concert there in Mayberry. All right, here we go. Lightning round. Uh, Williams, Winari, Winari. Um, too early to tell. I, again, I think Tennessee's in that lead group, and I don't think he's close to a decision right now. Mike Matthews. I, I feel like Tennessee is a lean Tennessee at this point going into the weekend. Ryan Wingo. Uh, I think Tennessee's in that lead group, much like when Aerie going to take that thing into the fall. Jordan Ross. Uh, that one's been trending away for a few months. Um, as he told me at the on three thing, you know, I look, Tennessee's brought in a lot of guys at my position, blah, blah, blah. And it just doesn't feel like, you know, things are, are jiving super well there. But again, who knows? You never know when the tide turns in a recruitment because, you know, it can. So you know, maybe it happens. Who knows this week? Cam Franklin. Um, I think Tennessee's got a ton of momentum coming out of that visit. He went to Ole Miss and he went to Miami. Do they still hold the momentum come this weekend? I think that's the biggest question. Aaron Scott. Uh, not coming here. Uh, DeMello Jones. I don't think he's coming here either. He's been up here a few times, though. He keeps coming. He's kind of like Daniel Kelly. <laughs> he's, he, he, he keeps coming back, but I think he sticks with Georgia. And speaking of Daniel Calhoun, he asked about Daniel Calhoun. Uh, Tennessee got a lot of momentum coming out of last weekend. Uh, we'll see, though. Um, Georgia was the the favorite pick going in. I think Tennessee did as well as they could do last weekend. Will that be enough? You know, I think it, you know time will tell. I think he comes off the board in the next couple of weeks. Tylen Singleton. Big weekend coming up this weekend. Uh, I think Tennessee uh, is sneaky in this thing big time uh, heading into the weekend, and we'll see uh, what kind of momentum they create this weekend. Max Anderson. Um done this feels like a game show rob lewis don't you feel like you're a spectator <laughs> in the game show we need some we need some background clap clap uh, claps and, and ap you know, a little a and AP, ah. needs, ap needs to be like holding up like cards like where he writes his answer like he writes an answer that holds it up Dilla, did you do yeah. deal or no deal <laughs> like I, I i thought about make i, I thought about doing a, a recruiting piece I'll, I'll throw this out there and let's see what the reaction is on the board I thought about doing a recruiting piece called Make It, Take It. And, you know, we all played that in basketball growing up. 
and you make the case and you take it or not. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I thought about doing that every, every now and again, it's not something you can do all the time. Keep going. What, what if we got you a ping pong paddle and it was green on one side and red on the other and you just flipped it back and forth. Sure. You know? Right. Of course we got baby. <laughs> all right. Edwin Spillman. Here we go. I still love Tennessee for Edwin Spillman. Amari Jefferson. Uh, Alabama's got the lead, but I think Tennessee can swing it back this weekend. Ronan O'Connell. Uh, it's tight, but I still lean Tennessee. Clemson to school there or Wisconsin? Clemson. All right. Uh, the kid from Utah, Roger. Too early to tell. Um, Amir Jackson, you think is done? I mean, obviously he's committed to Florida. I think he'll listen. Uh, again, I, I, like I said, you know, he committed with no no family members, no coaches, nobody around him. Maybe he just kind of got swept up in the weekend. We'll see. We'll see. I think he still ends up listening, but I'd say he sticks with Florida long term. Uh, Camaro Brown. Uh, not much going on there. Nate Frazier. Uh, I don't think anything's going to go on there either. Braylon Russell. Uh, Lean Tennessee. Uh, Marquez Easley. Uh, surprisingly, Tennessee in the top three. Georgia not, but uh, I still – I would not lean Tennessee. That's how I would put that. Uh, is it is it Kai Bates? K Bates? Kai Bates. Kai Bates. Uh, heading into this weekend with LSU, I think Tennessee sets in a great spot. Now – or do they set come Monday or Tuesday next week? William Satterwhite. Uh, you know, I, that kid's a mystery. He doesn't do a whole lot of talking. I probably thought he was going to commit to Clemson, but he's still taking visits coming this weekend. So that means he did not commit to Clemson because they don't allow it. So, you know, I'm interested by that one. Chase, Ty Chase Tyler. Uh, he wants to play receiver. Tennessee's not recruiting the receiver. Brandon Baker. Uh, don't think much is going there either. I know Tennessee made the top 10, but. Well, at West Coast. I think that's staying on the West Coast. Daniel Hill. Uh, not going to go till the fall, but I think Tennessee could have two backs by then. All right. That's going to do it for the that edition of the Lightning Round Rapid Fire with Austin Price, everybody's favorite. You tease that early in the podcast, everybody sticks through the entire podcast just to hear Austin Price's uh, uh, musings on Tennessee football recruiting. It is a big weekend for Tennessee on the recruiting front. We'll have full coverage of that. Rob Lewis has got the latest on basketball recruiting, uh, recruiting story up on the site uh, from yesterday. He's also will have uh, hoops recruiting in the war room. We'll have more on Tennessee's official visitors. We'll have more on baseball and we'll have more discussion with you on the general's quarters. That's going to do it for this edition of the Mailbag Podcast, presented by our good friends at Exterior Home Solutions. He is Rob Lewis, Austin Price. I'm Brent Hubs. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your Thursday, everybody. 